Hi folks, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you about rotational kinematics. Now our objectives for today are going to be to understand the analogy between translational and rotational kinematics, to use the right hand rule to associate angular velocity with the rotating object, as well as angular acceleration, understand the dynamics of fixed axis rotation, and to apply equations of translational and rotational motion to kinematics problems of both the translational and rotational variety. And these objectives are taken from the APC physics curriculum. Now as I say that, as we're going over the basic concepts here, we're not going to have time to get very deep into applications. So this is by no means a uh, a full development of the topic, but rather just the basic concepts to get you started. To truly understand what we're talking about here, you need to spend some time using these equations in different, uh, different formats, different applications. So again, this is just a starting point. To begin with, though, let's talk about radians and degrees. When we talk about objects rotating, moving in circles, we can use either the measurement of radians, degrees, or even revolutions. In degrees, once around a circle is 360 degrees, while in radians, that's actually 2 pi radians, where a radian measures the distance around an arc equal to the length of the arc's radius. Now, formally, radians are not a specific unit. Anything measured in radians is unitless, but oftentimes it's helpful to write radians after a value in order to make sure you understand uh, what you're talking about. Just clarifies things. So, displacement, a linear displacement, once around a circle, is the circumference C, or 2 pi, times the radius of that circular path. So let's see if we can't convert from one to another. If we have a sample problem where we're trying to convert 90 degrees to radians, how would we do that? Well, I would start by saying that 90 degrees, we want to multiply that by 2 pi radians, over 360 degrees. What we're really doing here is multiplying by 1 because 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. When we do that, we should come up with about pi over 2 radians or 1.57 radians. Pretty straightforward. We could also go and convert radians to degree, degrees. If we start with 6 radians, Same basic process. Now we have 2 pi radians in the denominator is equal to 360 degrees. Radians will make a ratio of 1. 6 times 360 degrees over 2 pi. And I come up with something right around 344 degrees. Let's talk about displacements, though, linear compared to angular. The linear position or displacement is given by delta r or delta s, whether you're talking about the scalar or the vector. And when we're talking about objects rotating, it's usually more helpful to talk about delta s, just so you don't start getting confused between delta r, a displacement or position, compared to the radius of the circle. Angular position, on the other hand, or displacement, is given by delta theta. And if we look over here on the right in our diagram, we have an object that's right here at time t0, and over time it moves around the circle until at some final time t it has moved that distance, its translational uh, displacement, s, is going to be equal to r, the radius of the circle, times the angle theta that it has moved through. So displacement delta s equals r delta theta, change in your angle. So we could talk about an angular displacement delta theta, just like we could talk about a translational displacement, delta s. We could also go and look at linear versus angular velocity in the same vein. Linear speed or velocity, again, whether you're talking about the scalar or vector, is given by v. Angular speed or velocity is given by the Greek symbol omega, and they, they're both vectors. If you remember, an object on a circle has at some given point, if it's in uniform circular motion, a velocity that is tangent to the path it's on, v. At the same time, it could have an angular velocity, the velocity with which it's going around the circle. That is omega. If the velocity vector is the rate of change of position with respect to time, the angular velocity vector is the rate of change of the, dis of the angular displacement, theta, with respect to time. Okay, very closely paralleled to each other. 
Now, the direction of the angular velocity vector isn't quite as apparent. If you think about it, as an object moves around a circle, the direction of its velocity is constantly changing. That's not overly helpful. So when we define the angular velocity vector, its direction is going to be defined by the right-hand rule. Wrap the fingers of your right hand in the direction the object is moving around the circle, and your thumb will point in the direction we're going to define as the direction of the angular velocity vector. Another way to think about that is the direction of the angular velocity vector is always going to be perpendicular to the plane of the circle the object is rotating in. We can even convert linear to angular velocity. If we think about it, we know that velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time or displacement. And we also know that we can convert from uh, translational displacement to angular displacement with s equals r theta. So we could replace s with r theta in our equation to say that the velocity is going to be d r theta dt. But in our problem for an object moving in a circle, the radius is constant. So we can pull the radius out of the derivative. Therefore, since r is constant, our velocity is going to be equal to r times the derivative of theta with respect to t. But as we just defined, the derivative of theta with respect to t is the angular velocity. So v equals r omega. There's our equivalence relationship. v equals r omega. Okay, how to convert from one to the other. Let's take a look at an angular velocity example. Let's find the magnitude of Earth's angular velocity in radians per second. Well, first thing we have to realize is that as the Earth rotates, it goes through one complete revolution in 24 hours. So using our definition of angular velocity, that's going to be change in angular displacement over some time interval. And if it goes around two pi radians in 24 hours, well, we've got two pi radians over 24 hours. That's going to be pi over 12 radians per hour. So pi over 12 radians per hour. But instead of radians per hour, I'd like to get this in radians per second. So let's convert that hours. One hour has in it 3,600 seconds. And I come up with an angular velocity of about 7.27 times 10 to the minus 5 radians per second for the magnitude of the angular velocity. Just a fairly straightforward problem using a very common example, something we should all be familiar with. We can also talk about linear versus angular acceleration. If linear acceleration is given by the a vector, then angular acceleration is given by the alpha vector. Now, alpha is just telling you how fast your rate of angular velocity is changing as you go around the circle. And that comes into play when you think about objects moving in a circle as they speed up or slow down as they're going around that circle. So if acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, the parallel to that in rotational motion, angular acceleration is going to be the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time. Let's take a look and do an example there as well. We have a frog riding a unicycle. Not sure why, it just is. If the unicycle wheel begins at rest, that means its initial angular velocity must be zero and accelerates uniformly in a counterclockwise direction up to an angular velocity of 15 revolutions per minute in a time of six seconds, find the angular acceleration of the unicycle wheel. Well, first thing I notice is that my final angular velocity is in RPMs. I'd really prefer to have that in radians per second. So let's make that conversion first. 15 revolutions per minute is 15 revs in 60 seconds, right? Now, we also know that one rev, one revolution, is 2 pi radians. So revolutions will cancel out, and I'll be left with radians per second with a value of about 1.57 radians per second. Next, we can use the definition of angular acceleration. If alpha is 
change in angular velocity over some time interval, well, that's going to be our omega final minus omega initial over delta t, which is 1.57 radians per second minus zero because it began at rest over six seconds, which comes out to be about 0 0.26 radians per second squared. And because that's in the counterclockwise direction, we think about it right hand rule, if your hand moves counterclockwise, you're going to call that the positive direction of angular acceleration. So 0 0.26 radians per second squared. All right, let's talk a little bit more about these parallels between translational and rotational kinematic variables. If we talk about displacement in the translational sense, we're talking about delta R or delta S, and we'll prefer delta S so we don't have to worry about the confusion between uh, position and radius of a circle. Then angular displacement is delta theta. Translational velocity, V. Angular velocity, omega. Translational acceleration, A. Angular acceleration, alpha. Translational time, T, is the same, of course, so angular time also t. We can also look at how we translate from one variable to another. Displacement s equals r theta. Well at the same time theta must equal s over r so we can convert from one to another if we know the radius of the circular path. Velocity equals r omega, omega equals v over r. a equals r alpha, alpha equals a over r and again t equals t. But as you look at these Hopefully, you can see the parallels here, R, R, R. Translational, translational, translational. Rotational, rotational, rotational. They all follow the same pattern. Learn the pattern and you don't have to memorize new formulas. Let's take a look at the kinematic equations as well. Kinematic equations, the three we have for translational motion, V equals V initial plus AT. Well, all we have to do is replace the translational variable with the rotational equivalent to come up with our rotational kinematic equations. Replace V with omega, V initial with omega initial, and A with alpha. Same thing for our next kinematic equations. Delta X becomes delta theta, V naught T becomes omega naught T, one half AT squared becomes one half alpha T squared. And V squared equals V initial squared plus two A delta X. Omega squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha delta theta. Again, same basic formulas, just replacing the variables translational to rotational. Now, one last thing before we move on. Let's see if we can't derive the formula for centripetal acceleration. And we're gonna start by expressing the position vector in terms of unit vectors. If you think about some point here on our circle, it has an x component of r cos theta, in the i hat direction, and the y component, r sine theta, in the j hat direction. So we could express this as r cosine omega t times i hat plus r sine omega t j hat. There's our position vector for a given point on the circle. Let's go from there and see if we can't derive the velocity. Using that starting equation, r of t equals r cos omega t, and we're using r here instead of s. Again, probably not the best use of variables, but it'll work for our case. Plus r sine omega t j hat, find velocity. Well, velocity is going to be the derivative of r with respect to t, which will be the derivative with respect to t of this equation, r cos omega t times i hat plus r sine omega t j hat. And the derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. So I can rewrite that as velocity is equal to the derivative with respect to t of r cos omega t i hat plus the derivative with respect to t of r sine omega t j hat. Looking at these, 
with the derivative, you can pull constants out of the derivative. R is a constant, I hat is a constant, and R over here is a constant, and J hat is a constant. So I could rewrite that as velocity equals R I hat times the derivative with respect to T of R cos, oops, pardon me, just cosine omega T plus R J hat times the derivative with respect to T of sine omega T. All right, time to do some differentiation. As I do this, the derivative of the cosine is the opposite of the sine. So this is going to be the opposite of the sine. So R I hat times negative sine omega t times the derivative of omega t, our, uh, our variable here. So we've got an omega in here. So R I hat omega times negative sine omega t plus on the right hand side rj hat derivative of the sine is the cosine cosine omega t times the derivative of this expression omega t derivative is going to have a derivative of omega so we'll have an omega out here so when i put all this together i come up with my velocity function as being equal to with a little bit of rearrangement minus omega r sine omega t i hat plus omega r cos omega t j hat. Let's take that one step further. If we want the acceleration, we could take the derivative of the velocity. So starting with that same equation, nice and neat at the top of the slide here, let's find the acceleration. A equals the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we're going to take the derivative of that. The derivative with respect to t of minus omega r sine omega t i hat plus omega r cos omega t j hat. And not going through quite as many steps, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So we're going to have minus omega r, our constants that can come out again, minus omega r. Derivative of the sine of omega t is cosine omega t times the derivative of this expression, omega t. Derivative of omega t will be an omega. So we'll have another omega over here times i hat plus omega r derivative of the cosine omega t opposite of the sine of omega t times the derivative of this expression omega so we've got an omega squared here j hat and with just a little bit of rearrangement I can write that as acceleration being equal to minus omega squared we'll pull that out now we have r cos omega t i hat plus r sine omega t j hat. That should look fairly familiar. That is our initial position function. That's r hat. Therefore, we could say that acceleration equals minus omega squared r. And by the way, using our uh, conversion between translational and rotational variables, you can also very easily show that that's equal to v squared over r. So there's our key equation now that we're all done with that. Acceleration equals minus omega squared r or v squared over r for your centripetal acceleration. Why the negative sign there? Well, if you think about it, the position vector r points from the origin to the point on the circle. Our acceleration points toward the center of the circle in the opposite direction. That's where that negative sign is coming from. Hopefully that gets you started with rotational kinematics. If you need more help looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.